Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this guest narration narrated by Gridanad, who came in clutch and did this narration while I'm recovering from the Rona. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. Humanity's Companion by Warpmind Cardala Prime, Evening. So, it's been a few months since you joined us. We've been wondering. We've never seen you call on it for help. So, what's Humanity's analog not found? Jake looked at his colleague, slightly puzzled. Er, er what? Buzaz, I have no idea what you asked about. The translator didn't recognize the term. The Cardanan stroked an eight-jointed finger along the bar. Humanity's unknown entity needs more data to approximate. You know, the being your entire species is protected and guided by. Jake scratched his head, taking a sip from his ale. That really doesn't translate well. Hmm. Are you talking about gods? You don't really have one as such. I think humanity's had 10,000 of them, give or take a couple thousand. Most don't even believe in them. Buzaz flared his nostrils slightly. Not gods. We've had our pantheons in our past too. No, I mean all of humanity's error. You know, the one who's always there to guide you, regardless of faith. The one every member of your species can channel in times of need. The one every member of your species has an intimate connection to. Jake shook his head slowly. We don't have anything like that. We don't even have a word for it. Are you talking about a being of some sort, like a guardian angel? Zaz tilted his head. Hmm. Close. Not quite it. Translator implies these guardian angels are dependent on religion, yes? But all different. Not one collective entity. Jake sighed. Okay. The translator has figured out that it's an entity you're referring to. I can't narrow it down beyond that. Okay, let us say, for the sake of argument, that humanity actually has one of those things, and I just don't know about it. How would I go about finding out? Zaz frowned. Why, a mirror of sages, of course. No species has made it to the galactic community without one to help guide them. Jake looked at Buzaz as though his alien friend had suddenly grown a fifth horn. A mirror of what now? I don't think Earth's ever had one of those. We figured everything out on our own. Buzaz blinked slowly. You've never looked in a mirror of sages? You've never seen your patron entity? Jake arched an eyebrow. Translator's getting warmer, I think. It suggested patron entity as something close, but no, never seen it. Buzaz drained his drink. All right, we have one in town. We're going straight there. This I have to see. Jake finished his own ale inside. Not getting out of this, hon, huh? All right, I'll bite. What's yours? Buzaz grinned. Cardala's patron entity is Sazaza, the builder. She taught our people to build shelters from the environment from before we developed agriculture. Whenever one of our kind needs to create a safe space from something, whether cold wind and rain, blistering sun, or the vacuum of space, Sazaza guides our hands, even manifests to aid us directly if the need is great enough. Jake nodded. Okay, that's interesting. But she's not a goddess. Bizarre shook his head. Gods are transient, but Sazaza requires no worship. She did not make us, she is... Out of phrases. There is part of her in all Cardalans, no exceptions, and she only works with the living. The gods have reign over the afterlife. If you believe in something like that, but the patrons only deal with the living. Jake Scratcher said. All right, tagging along. Is it far? Before the Mirror of Sages, Cardana Prime. Buzaz walked to, into the chamber first, leading the way to the large black mirror. So dark, Jake thought it was a hole in the wall leading to nowhere? As Jake watched Buzaz walk closer, a Cardalan woman began to appear next to him, dressed in functional clothes and carrying some tools at her waist. Ah, that must be Sazaza. Buzaz grinned. Yes, she'll manifest when we come close to the mirror. So tell me, what colors do you see? What images do you see in the mirror? Jake walked closer. Just black, in fact. It's blacker and black, probably a shade darker than Fanta black, even. Buzaz paused, slowly turned his head towards Jake. You're joking, right? Everyone sees the colors of their patron reflect... Uh... A tall, gaunt, outright skeletal figure in a hooded robe of blacker than black, carrying a scythe, stepped up next to Jake. I shall admit it's not much to look at. 
but we all play the hand we are dealt, and I dare say I've done quite well by you, haven't I, Jacob? Jacob slowly turned to face death, even as Buzaz and Sazaza backed away. Uh, I don't know, maybe? Death regarded Jake for a long moment. I've always been with you all, been part of humanity. No one has ever been completely alone, you know. There's always been me. Jake tried to find his voice again. Uh, so natural disasters? Diseases? Murder? Were you responsible for all those too? Because that's not really what I call doing. Death wagged a finger. I've done nothing of the sort. I've been the last friend anyone's ever had. There to help them move on when their souls have been ready to leave the body behind. I've never had the need to forcibly harvest anyone not ready to move on. I am inevitability. I have no need to hasten anything at all. Bazaar squeaked out, J Jake? What sort of world was your Earth again? Jake frowned. Earth? Death world. Class 8. Why? Death chuckled. It sounded like a kazoo in a very large, empty stone cave. Death world, yes. An appropriate term. Though unfair, there is so much life there. Though ultimately, it is mine, and its people are mine, part of me. He turned to Buzaz. Curiosity can be a dangerous thing, Buza Torres. Some answers may cause you to never sleep well again. You see me for what I am, and you fear it. I see you for what you are, too. And your people need not fear me. You create homes, and will not bring me out in humanity. But I can tell you know which people might do so. Perhaps you would be so kind as to spread the word. He turned to Sazaza and bowed. If, of course, you will permit, milady. Then he turned and walked away, only pausing to add, Oh, and Jacob, Rusty is waiting for you. Not to worry, you have several decades left. But there is something good waiting for you on the other side. Until then, I'll always be here when you need me. Bazaz slumped to the ground, kneeling, and stared at Jake. Your death, your entire species is death. And then he passed out. Three years later, while Jake stayed in his job at Cardala, Buzaz set out towards other home systems, warning the more warlike species about humanity's patron and protector. One decided they didn't believe the warnings, and set out to conquer this upstart species. The result was inevitable. There's an app for that, by Echoing Cascade. Isakar was a smuggler, a damn good one, or so she had thought until today. She had been caught by doing a rookie mistake, being the one piloting a ship full of illegal wares. But she was lucky. She had recently bought a file that was going to be worth every credit today. How to escape from humans. She had been allowed to keep her datapad for legal reasons. She needed it to be able to contact a lawyer and to learn what her rights were under Terran law, or so the bigger of the two bounty hunters had told her. She was held in the back of a small cargo ship, converted into a heavy fighter, by adding more guns than was reasonable. Of the Terran pair of bounty hunters that had her in her custody, the larger one was piloting while the other kept his eyes on her. She checked the datapad for tips. First and foremost, try to bribe them. Humans like credits, like fish like water. I have no idea what a fish is, but here goes! Isakar, I have tons of credits stashed away, more than what my bounty is actually. It can all be yours if you let me go. The Terran looked at her funny, looked at the pilot, and resumed his watch. Okay, that didn't work. What's next? If it's a man, and you're hot, seduce them. Trust me, it'll work. My core temperature is good, and I know males desire me. Besides, I'm a Vardis, which I hear Terrence describe as sexy green babes. You saw her. Say, big man, if you let me go, I can make it worth your while, if you know what I mean. She pushed her breasts forward to make her advances more obvious. The Terrans still did not look interested. In fact, he tilted his head sideways at this. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's not the right reaction. Before she could look up in her datapad for what to do next, a shot rang out that hit the spot right above her head. Pilot. Listen, bitch, you try to bribe or seduce my dog one more fucking time, and you're spending the rest of the trip unconscious. Dog! She looked it up in her datapad and winced at her mistake. She rallied quickly. The pilot was definitely a human female, 
and there was a famous sentence that was a sure shot way to seduce one. He saw her. Hey girl, how are you do The pilot had turned around and shot her with an electric stun charge. As the smuggler lay there convulsing, the pilot called her dog. Come here, boy. As she petted the good dog, she contacted the bounty office. Pilot, this is Elena. I have the Terra smuggler stunned in the cargo hold. Roger that. Oh, and tell Bob she tried to use his stupid guide, and if he's anywhere in the station when I get there, I'm shoving her datapad up his ass. Sideways. He asks if he can give you a cut of the profits instead. That works too, I guess. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Fudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.